Hi everyone. This video will demonstrate how to properly clean a removable appliance. For your patients that wear dentures or partials, or even patients with mouth guards or bruxism guards, we give these items a courtesy cleaning when the patient comes in for their dental appointments. This will help remove any buildup that may be stuck on the appliance. First thing we do, take the item from the patient with gloved hands. This appliance just came out of the patient's mouth, so make sure you're wearing gloves. Then bring it into sterilization and give it a good rinse under the faucet. This will help to remove any bulky debris from the appliance, such as food particles. So rinse the item thoroughly, and then we're going to put it into a plastic bag. We're going to use the ultrasonic cleaner to loosen up the really tough stuck on debris. So I can't just put the patient's appliance into that ultrasonic cleaner. All the patient care items for the day go in there. So that would make the appliance very dirty. So what I have to do is I have to keep it separated from that dirty ultrasonic solution. So this technique that we'll use is called a double barrier technique. So we'll put the appliance into a bag with the tartar and stain remover, and then I'll put that bag into a glass beaker as the second barrier to prevent contamination of this plastic bag. Your bag can be a Ziploc bag, a headrest cover, something that you can seal up. So put the appliance into the bag and then add your tartar and stain remover. Make sure you follow your manufacturer's instructions if it needs to be diluted. Add enough solution to completely submerge the appliance. Seal your bag. In this case, with a headrest cover, I'm going to tie it into a knot that will help keep the solution inside. And then I'll place this bag into the beaker because I can't just put the bag into the ultrasonic. The solution would contaminate the outside the bag. So when I go to retrieve it, my gloves would touch the outside, which would then make my gloves dirty. So when I go to touch the appliance, I would transfer that solution, that dirty solution onto the appliance. So, we're going to use the beaker as that second barrier to prevent the bag from getting contaminated. Also, there could be pinholes in that bag that could allow ultrasonic solution to leak inside. Use the beaker with this little rubber gasket on it that'll help stabilize it. Use a clean disinfected beaker. Put your beaker into the ultrasonic cleaner with a special lid with a hole that will allow you to stabilize your beaker. That rubber gasket will help to seat the beaker properly into that opening. Make sure the beaker doesn't bob up and down, that it's nice and seated firmly into that opening. You could always add more water to seat it. It needs more weight if it's floating. Add a cover to your beaker. This will help prevent aerosols coming up from the other side and landing on the bag inside. And then turn on your ultrasonic cleaner for the length of the patient's appointment, at least 15 or 20 minutes. But if the patient is with us for an hour, we can keep it in for an hour. So we will come back when the ultrasonic cleaner is done and we'll finish caring for the appliance. A special side note about ultrasonic cleaners. We don't want to use ultrasonic cleaners if someone in the office has a pacemaker. The ultrasonic frequency, the sound waves, can affect the pacemaker. Really, anything that runs on electricity can affect pacemakers. Microwaves, speakers, cell phones but we're really concerned about ultrasonic cleaners and ultrasonic scalers. So just make a note of that to not use these devices if someone is in your office with a pacemaker. When you're ready to remove your appliance, 
to remove it properly. Remember that ultrasonic cleaner solution is dirty. With the beaker sitting in the solution, we cannot touch the beaker. Open the lid and remove the bag. Keep the beaker in that lid until you're ready to take care of it properly. So when you're ready, we would take it out, rinse it and disinfect it so we can then use it on the next person. We then need to remove the appliance from the bag. In this situation, I can either untie the knot or I could poke a hole in the bag. If you choose to poke a hole in the bag, make sure you poke a hole away from you. Don't open the the bag to the front or the solution will come splashing out at you. So carefully stretch the bag to create a hole and let the solution drain out. And then you can remove your appliance. Now that the appliance has been through the ultrasonic cleaner, which has loosened any stuck on debris, I can then brush it with a denture brush. I'm going to use a new denture brush because I can then give this to the patient so the patient can take this brush home with them for home care. Turn on your faucet, hold the appliance firmly, and then scrub it under the running water. Use both sides of your denture brush. You can use the larger flat bristles to brush the teeth and tissues. The underside, the part that touches the patient's tissue, we can use the the smaller side. So we're scrubbing away all that loosened debris. Give it a good rinse under the faucet. So now we can give our patient back their appliance along with that new denture brush so they can use it at home. An additional courtesy we can do for our patient is we can spray a diluted Listerine or mouthwash spray onto the appliance. Sometimes our tartar and stain remover doesn't taste the best. So freshening it up with some minty mouthwash can make it a little more pleasant for the patient. So this is the proper way to clean a removable appliance using that double barrier technique. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching.